question for you, Toby Walsh. I very recently read an article um, in which it described a situation in which AI was unexpectedly found to be very proficient in designing a lethal new nerve agent. Mm. Um, is it possible for designers using AI to ever anticipate such potentially lethal outcomes? And if they do, and what to do if such outcomes are discovered? Th thank you. That's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, um, unfortunately, um, if you can get... Uh, the original program was designed to come up with um, nice chemicals, useful chemicals, mm -hmm. and then they just turned it around and said, well, OK, let's, let's ask the opposite question. Uh, can you design something that's, that's quite dangerous? And it was actually very effective at, at designing some recognised nerve agents. And that, that is the consequence of... AI is entirely dual use. There are positive uses mm -hmm. and... Often the very same algorithms can be put to, to very negative uses. Um, and it's how like we choose... Like human beings. Like human beings, yeah. yes. Um, but an added complication is the unexpected consequences that we often cannot predict. We can't see... The, in that case, um, we've seen a few things like that in the past. It was possible... I mean, they asked the very the question. In fact, the fact they asked the question, they knew that it was possible. But the unexpected consequences, and we see this at scale with companies like Meta, because we've never had a technology before where you can touch a billion people overnight. Um, and even small effects, even small effects uh, on our social media that can polarize us, that can change, change our political debate, can have really profound impacts and can learn, end up with changing the outcome of an election, as we possibly saw um, in the US, or change the outcome of a referendum, as we saw with Brexit. There are, there are very profound consequences of this technology, and we have to what, think very carefully through What do we do, Dorinda? Um, I think what, you know, this is ever evolving and, and, and evolving very, very rapidly and I agree with Keith's comment around the regulatory framework that this needs to sit within. What I also think is really important to acknowledge is that is the data that you input into that, mm. it's only as good as that, right? Like, it, it can only be as good as the human data that's being put into it. Mm. But also, it... We all have that experience of being unsafe on the internet. And I think reinforcing some of those structural disadvantages, such as uh, facial recognition, mm. that's, that's already been proven. It's, it's well held as a view. And we have to understand that, that disadvantaged groups, whether it's gender, race and others, are going to be heightened in this in, um, evolution of AI in the future. The, I, I, I want to come back... Um... I want to come back to you, Joan, in, in, in just a moment, because you're a, you work in education, so I want to come back to you on how this affects education. But, Keith, as someone who served um, in war, and Toby's touched on the, the, the consequences of this, we see this with drone warfare now as well, where people can be killed without ever having to look into their eyes. Robot armies, um, which don't make human calculations, human decisions that are indefatigable, um, they'll just march and, and fight um, to beyond exhaustion, because they don't get exhausted. What does it mean for the battlefield and what does it mean for warfare? It's a very good question. So there was a study done on the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, uh, I think around 2014, and 90% of the civilian casualties were in error, human error. And so humans, we made mistakes. And you're right, the further you are from the battlefield in an aircraft or operating a drone, the more likely you'll make a mistake. And, and, and I saw it. I saw times when there was a drone that looked like someone was carrying an explosive and then on further investigation, they were carrying a baby. Mm -hmm. and, and you need a human there to make those sort of calculations because I don't trust an algorithm to show compassion and humanity even when all the boxes are ticked to engage. And we need more of that. Joan, for education, and we talked about... We talked about chat GPT, and that can do your homework, apparently, as well. If only, if only it was around. Um, what, what are the consequences for education, as you see it, from AI? Well, I, I'm not so worried about cheating um, in education, to be honest. Um, I'm more concerned about the deeper if issue. I played around with chat mm. GPT yesterday, asking wonderful questions, um, and I'm teaching Nietzsche 
on Friday, people who might know. Ne uh, Nietzsche uh, and ChatGPT <laughs> opens up all sorts of possibilities. Well, but, it was but he did say he did say God was dead, and maybe that's what artificial yeah. intelligence <laughs> means. But it blew my mind because because I asked the question, what would Nietzsche think of AI? Mm. And this wonderful answer came back, and that made me really reflect on really. What does it mean? Now, this is getting a bit philosophic, I know, but really our humanness. Mm. And if we've got these large language mod models and they can produce this wonderful stuff, not like your poor Dave, your <laughs> poor him, um, really, what does it mean? What happens to our creativity mm. or what could happen might... to human creativity, our individuality, um, our real sense of being human, really, if there's this huge model that can produce this amazing stuff. It blew my mind, yeah, yeah. really. Oh, I might throw that one to John. Nietzsche and AI, John, in, I, I, in, in 10 seconds. I thought that there'd be a lot we'd be discussing this evening, but Nietzsche I didn't have on my answer. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I think, it, I think it's really important questions because I think that actually... Dorinda, what you said is right and sort of not because you've now got machine learning. Mm. You've now got machines that are able to learn themselves and decide which way they're going to take themselves. And I just kind of worry that, in putting this in a slightly political mm. context, is that throughout this kind of the whole internet age, regulation has just simply not been able to keep up Absolutely. with the technological Bingo. changes that are leaping forward from Alphabet, from Google, from you know, Meta and Facebook and all the rest of it. Mm. And the legislators, whether in Australia, whether in Britain, whether in America, are totally left behind Absolutely. by this. So, so Anne, just, just quickly on that, and this is your, your wheelhouse, of course, because yeah. it's early childhood Absolutely. education. And there, there are, there are, this really raises questions about ethics and the ethics of AI and the responsibility of those who are producing And also regulation. It raises regulation, about what you're prepared to ethics, allow. Ethics, regulation, and think about the privacy of your information. Every time you ask the chatbot that question, more and more information is being put into the, the, the big data pool from which it pulls. So there are, there are real ethical and legal questions around this. And you're absolutely right, John. We are miles behind where we need to be and technology is so mm. rapidly evolving that it's almost the, the, the horse has already bolted, yeah. right? Um, but on the use of, of AI for criminal activities and, act, and the bad use of AI, I've always said criminals are not innovators, they're opportunists. So whatever technology happens, whatever advances in technology happen, they're going to find ways to exploit that. We need to be building technology with safeguards in place. For example, the cheating thing. Why couldn't it have a watermark on it? That if you print out from an, uh, from, from a, an essay, hand it in, there's a watermark on it that the teacher knows that it's not yours, OK? Me, as a teacher, when I was teaching, when I was a professor, I could tell straight away if someone's work was... they cheated, because I insisted that they reference their work absolutely perfectly in Cambridge style. The AI can't do that. It can. It can <laughs> reference in Cambridge perfectly, mm. With the right full stop and comma? Yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Listen, idea. At, this point, <laughs> at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you the results of our online poll. Now, we asked you, are you concerned about the increasing presence of artificial intelligence in our everyday lives? And... Uh, can I see? Someone, someone's got their head in front of the screen. And I can't... There we go. 57% yes, 31% no and 12% unsure. Um, but, Toby, it's here. Um, that's the reality. And just to, to quote Nietzsche, Nietzsche did say, who are we to erase the horizon? If you erase the horizon, what are the consequences of this? This is here, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And I, I'm really pleased by that poll because it says that, that people are waking up to the idea that AI is going to be part of their lives. It's not just part of, you know, geeks like me. Who it are already being, is. Yeah. It's, it's already part that's of your right. lives. And that's something we should be worried about. It's, there's great opportunity. Those same tools can be perfect personal tutors to people. Mm. They can provide, um, you know, we, we had the Grattan report saying, you know, we need to provide a um, billion dollars worth of personal tutoring to, to, to help disadvantaged children. Well, here is a tool that can provide that mm. at much less cost, possibly. Um, 
uh, and that, that we get to choose the future that we want. And we obviously have to demand that of our and, politicians. And we, and we don't get to get them to write Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, but, but, that's but people really bad at Valentine's Day. Te te technology is not destiny. Yeah. Society right. gets to cha cha change technology as much as technology changes society. And it's all about us making the right choices, mm. sitting in places like this, deciding mm. what is it the future we want to have. Mm. And I don't think that's actually in the future, Toby. I think that's yeah. here and now. It's here and now. Yeah. Debt already proved what yes. AI can do mm. for everyday Australians. And I think that we need to have that front of mm. mind. And it is the voluntary principles that... that people, you know, that yeah. use AI yeah. right now. You have now, to keep have remembering, to it's to. not sentient. It's not human. It's, yes. it's based on algorithms. Yes, that's the question. But look, we could go on all night. <laughs> yeah.